Okay, uh, I'm going to record this, and uh, we're just going to look around at the market using HGSI and uh, Thinkorswim. Uh, Paul just got a cable installed, so he's uh, pretty elated about uh, having decent speed, and uh, that'll keep up with, um, with uh, now he can keep up with my charts and so on. Uh, anyway, uh, let's just look at some of these uh, intraday scans. Anybody doing anything today, or are you just kind of sitting like I am? I'm going to go down to the, my market open scans. And uh, let's just... Uh, Let's go to number one here, and I'm in all securities. Yeah, it's a dangerous market, Ben. Says he got stopped out. Uh, Learn that that looked good last week. Uh, leaders up intraday on volume, and uh, there are only ten securities in here. And uh, Zoom is uh, it looks like it uh, gave it all back. It was up nearly 12%. Let me bring it up here. And uh, I'll zoom in on this. Well, it's six, the last compared to the open, 656. Uh, the one day change. Four eleven. You can see this number corresponds with this down here. Uh, it was much higher, and then it fell back. But this this stock, uh, as I I think I put it in an email, it uh, it opened here, traded down, then it started appearing very early in the morning, and uh, it would have been a good uh, intraday trade. Now these other stocks uh, have all been in here all day, every one of them. I hit the F5 key. I'm just doing an update uh, manually. A little bit slower today. Not bad, though. So now it's working its way through the charts. Uh, this uh, Moderna, this is a biotech, a couple of precious metals. Well, there's two biotechs, all sort on industry here when this finishes. A couple of biotechs, a couple of application software, one of which is Zoom. Let's look at Everbridge. Now, Everbridge is holding up very nicely uh, today. You can see uh, this was a gap down in this this would come up in uh, multiple intraday scans here. It would come up uh, in the scan fan up and uh, uh, with a gap down and then going back up. And what's the, uh, the gain on this? It gapped down 7.32%. The last divided by the open is uh, 8.15 and the change from the low divided by the high is 11%. So now this is a problem with automatic updating and uh, talking at the same time. Maybe I'll just take that updating off for now. What do you think? Or leave it on. It's kind of a pain. I'll take it off. We'll just do manual updating, okay? And now it's got to run through its thing again. And it's because I've got uh, three charts up here that it's taking uh, taking longer. Okay. Okay, here we are. We're back here. There's Zoom again. 
No, what's up? I'm sorry. This is Everbridge. Did Everbridge drop out of here? No. Uh, maybe the volume. Uh, what's the uh, EVBG? It dropped out uh, on the. Uh, on the update, um, must not have been me making the volume requirements. Uh, maybe I better look into that uh, going forward. Anyway, let's move on down here. I'm going to uh, look at the most active intraday, $5 and up. I'll sort on raw combo. Uh, silver, mag silver comes to the top. You can see there's a bunch of precious metal. And I just got a notice on my Fitbit that gold is, uh, is moving up now as a... Uh, a place to hide. We're seeing it reflected here in the metals and mining. There's only 38 securities in here. And uh, if when I do the spectrum analyzer, look at this, it's uh, uh, almost 32% of the stocks uh, that are passing the most active up. So a lot, a lot of money it looks like it's flowing into the uh, precious metals. Okay. Let's look at the 1 to 5 group. Uh, 29 securities in here. And this is all precious. Well, it isn't all, but it's dominated by the precious metal metals again. And some biotech. A few internet-based services. Let's see what those are. Oh, I know what they are. They're... Uh, one of them is that Blue Apron, which uh, had a horrible IPO. And uh, this is the, this was, Paul, you and I talked about this early today, and I said it's up. And uh, this is one of those uh, online ordering sites where you have the prepared, or the dinners come to you and then you prepare them. And uh, look at this. Here was the IPO. This is craziness. Can this be true? Uh, that this thing was a hundred and fifty dollars stock. Does that ring a bell? I don't think that's right, is it? Oh, that's uh, the weekly chart shows. Let's see what the weekly says. Man, if that is the case, uh, Uh, stops were warranted, weren't they? I, I, that doesn't sound right to me. I, I thought that thing came out about 10 bucks. What they do have a bunch of uh, reverse splits. Does anybody know? I don't know. But anyway, it's, uh, it's under the $5 mark. And what's it up today? Look at this. 72, 73% today. And this was showing up early. So even in rotten markets like this, uh, if you want to uh, take a chance, you can find some of these stocks. Here's one that's up 88% uh, today. It's a little, uh, little stock here. What is this? Internet-based services. They have decent revenue. Those are millions. And uh, it uh, it opened here, and uh, it's up a boatload. If you can catch these, if you you have to pay attention to them, obviously. Wow, that uh, apron really surprises me. Okay, here's here's another one. You know, we'll probably do this tomorrow uh, during the webinar too. Here's the most active down. Let's let's take a look at uh, biotech expiration. Well, here you can see it. I don't have to read it to you. And that's uh, one to five and five dollars and up. There's 342 most active down, and it looks like it's dominated by REITs and casinos and gaming, which is only logical because uh, I think their business is obviously going to drop off uh, a lot. Restaurants are getting killed midstream. 
application software. It's uh, none of these are a surprise, is what I'm saying. Okay, these are the most active ETFs only. I'm going to do the five dollars and up. Well, here's here's that to what I was just saying, the gold. Uh, but this is a three X. The juniors and uh, the Direxion. And then here's another miners. Let's just look at this. And, um, oh boy. Look at this. This is a 3x that at one time was, uh, oh, up about $700. And now it's, uh, it's down here about $8. But it's up on 93.97% today. So, uh, you know, that's a pretty good move, huh? Let's look at the Direxion. Okay, another ETF. And these are leveraged. So, uh, you know, I, I really don't know how they calculate uh, the numbers and uh, do it with uh, options and so on. But uh, anyway, this was a... Uh, $145 stock all the way down to, uh, well, what was the low? The low was yesterday here. About, uh, looks like about $5.15. And the intraday change today is 106.93. Uh, so, hi Raymond, hi Tom, hi PK. We're just going over a few things on these intraday scans. I mentioned it the first of the video, and I'm recording this so you can catch the first part. Uh, I won't put it out until tomorrow, though, probably. Uh, anyway, Paul got uh, cable at his house, so he's pretty excited going from, uh, I don't remember what you had, but you have uh, 30 megs now, right? Okay, so let's, let's move on down here. Uh, I'm going to, let me see what we've got here. Well, that's combined. I don't want to do that. Now, PK, glad you're on. Let's take a look. I'm going to move down, down this list here, and we're going to get down here. I put another uh, view in here for you, slight modification on the filter to see if that helps you out. And uh, we're going to take a look at that. These are stocks that had at least a 2% gap up. And that is accomplished in the filter. Very simple filter. doesn't get any simpler than this. Uh, intraday percent gap greater than 2%. Last close, a dollar trading 250,000 shares. I didn't even specify if it's a common stock or not. And uh, you can uh, tell right here in this column, after my charts update here, if I would kill the monthly and the weekly, it'd be a lot faster. But I, I, I like to have them in there for perspective. So here is uh, OPGN, whatever that is. And it went from, it's a biotech. It gapped up 70.15% uh, and uh, let's verify that. What I do is I go to yesterday's close. I use the alternate A key and I go to today's open. I'll get it as close as I can. And uh, well, that's pretty close. It says 69.1%. The calculated is 70.15. Uh, so what it's telling us is that from yesterday's close to today's open, it was up 70.15%. And that was really just the beginning. Let me get rid of this. Because uh, the range or the one-day change today, and if you want to trade these uh, small caps, it's 119.65, and this is where it currently is trading. Let's see where it traded. I'm going to bring this back up. 
alternate A. Let's see where it traded from here to the high. 187.2%. You know, even if you're only trading uh, a few of these shares, if you catch these things, and I know they're dangerous, what stock isn't dangerous? The market's uh, proving that right now, isn't it? Uh, you can uh, you can really make some money, and, and that's why these small caps are really popular among people, especially day traders. Look at all these low-priced stocks in here that gapped up. Now, here's a gap. Oh, that's the Energy Bear 3X. Look at this. It gapped up 10%. Um, Let's see if we can find a higher gap here. I'm sorting on the gap. No, I don't think so. Here's the TVIX. It gapped up 54.1%. Uh, I want to show you this thing. Uh, this is insanity. L look at this. Uh, and like I said, I really don't know how they uh, construct these uh, two and three times. But if you look over here, I can't even read these numbers. They're so high. Actually, it's around 50,000. And then it got down here. Well, it got down here to, uh, if you look over here, about 40 bucks. Now, if I zoom in on this, you can see, whoops, I went too far here. You can see what's happened to it the last month. Didn't even register. So here's the last month here. And then it shot up. But this is one, two, three, four weeks. And uh, on this one right here, this you can see that uh, it was under accumulation according to the uh, VPA flags. And then here's an effort to rise, uh, you know, with a counter flag. But let's say you took that because volume is moving up. And I just want to prove a point here. Let's take it from there to today's high. That is, if you look down here where my mouse is, 878.8% uh, .8 over 15 trading days. You'd have to have a lot of guts to hold this, so, And uh, very few, if anybody, is, is going to hold it. But uh, it's unbelievable, isn't it? In this market. If you have any questions, you know, you can turn your mic on or you can uh, write me a note if you want to. I've got it on my other uh, monitor. Okay, let's move on. That was the intraday gap. Intraday bullish reversal, at least 2% off of the low. I'm going to sort on raw combo. And uh, this is one uh, where I changed the uh, combo over the weekend. I'm using the intraday change, the last divided by the open. GLIBA, let's see, what is this? A, uh, well, that's a $49 stock. Yeah, it's, it's down, of, this would be interesting, it's down $14.54 on my last update. Uh, but... Uh, this is at least a 2% reversal off the low. Let's bring up the chart here. Okay. How's this? See, it found this thing. And uh, stopping volume today at test. Here's the low. And here is the close. Or not the close, where it currently is. So that is a massive move, which was picked up by this. And it uh, it would have let's do the alternate A thing again. So here's the low. My hand's shaky today. And uh, wow, OK. I'm trying to get it at 2%. Somewhere in there, it would have started showing up. Because my filter, if my filter is correct, 
and I think it is, 2% uh, off of the low uh, would have been coming in here, and that was still down around $28, and look where it's, it's trading now. Amazing, isn't it? Let's go in and check that filter. The high divided by the low, there's the 2%. Okay, and the 66.6% of the uh, daily range, what it, which, which it would have shown up down there uh, because it would be trading in the upper part of its range and above uh, every average volume. So it, it should have shown up down there. The only way... To really verify this is for me to come in and uh, take early morning snapshots, and I should have done that today, but I think in this nutty market we're going to have lots of opportunities uh, uh, to do that. Okay, this one is what happens when I check the filter. All right, now here's fan up. Let's see the difference here. 441, if I do a fan up only, Cuts it down to 79. So these are the stronger uh, stocks. You can see Rite Aid Corporation is um, at, on top. I think uh, Piers is in this. That's all right, Raymond. I'm I'm recording it. Uh, I'll put it on the uh, in the uh, webinar. I mean the uh, the PowerPoint tomorrow. I don't think I'll get it out today. Uh, so once again. Here's another stock that uh, gapped down and uh, made a massive move. The high divided by the low is uh, for almost a 50% gain today. So if we start buying some of these, and I'm not buying any of them today. I'm, I'm just doing testing and observations. Uh, but... Uh, you know, you can risk a little money on these, uh, e even in even in these uh, uh, crappy markets. Let's look at Everquote. That's kind of a familiar name, isn't it? What is this? An insurance company or bank? And uh, here's the gap down, and then uh, two percent reversal off the low, probably in here somewhere. It would start showing up, and. Uh, I think uh, over time, and I need to prove it to myself, is just go in and start buying some of these uh, uh, because uh, these filters work. Uh, this is the intraday range. Th th these require uh, that they be in the 80 percentile on the, uh, on the range. You can see that all of these are. That, that's a lot of stock. Uh, well, I didn't mean to do that. That's a lot of stocks that are trading in their uh, range. Now, sometimes you'll get a number over 100. I don't know what causes that. But look at all these that are trading at the top of their range today in a uh, market that... Uh, well, let, let me look over here see what the comp's down. The, it's down 10.35 percent right now. I, I guess my point is there are these opportunities every day using these filters and you would never ever see these stocks uh, anywhere else. Agreed? Or am I just kidding myself? So 197 with the fan up it cuts it down to 12. Uh, so if you want to uh, stick to stocks that have the fan up let's go in and look at RAD And you can't tell anything here. But if I drop down to my fan chart, you can see the fan is still intact even after all this. Now I mentioned it the other day that I made these uh, fan lines for the 200, the 100, the 50, and the 18 thicker. And I uh, made the uh, 3 and 6 thinner because I wanted the fan to stand out better. It just got too jumbled and confused, so that's why I changed it. 
Now, the, new, the failing New York Times, according to Trump, uh, it got hit here. It's lost 10 bucks. Uh, but here is a test for supply. And by the way, they are doing uh, very well. Uh, look, look at the uh, revenue growth here. 1.1%, but that's uh, $508 million, And the earnings were up 34 Point four percent. They're doing really well. Yeah. Uh, no, as much as uh, the news print has been uh, belittled, uh, the Times is doing better than anybody else. Uh, but uh, you know, they're they're hanging in there and uh, actually growing. Okay. Ah, uh, let's see. This is the last minus the open. Two uh, percent. The range is eighty percent. I'm not going to go into that. Let's take a look at these here. Uh, PK. This this is the uh, the uh, filter that I had before, that I still have because I I think it works. And it does work because uh, well let's let's look at the filter even though I have to. Uh, to update it. Um, intraday gap is down less than zero. The volume is above normal and the percentage change high divided by the low is greater than zero. And it's a it's you know it's a very simple filter. All these most of these filters are very simple. Uh, but uh, you know Matt gave us the ability to do this stuff. So let's let these charts rebuild. And come on, there we're almost there. Okay. Uh, look at this. Now let, let me go back. Let me get out of this fan. Let's go back here to the intraday chart so I can look at this information. The intraday change, the last divided by the open, is uh, 67, almost 68 percent, and it's trading near the high of its range here, 98.11 percent, after gapping down here. So, the people with courage, or maybe it's being foolhardy, I don't know, uh, but they can jump in on uh, on stuff like this and. Uh, once again, in, in a really bad market, uh, there are always opportunities. I, from from what I see, there are opportunities for us every day, in any kind of market. I mean, the market doesn't get much worse than this. Opportunities on the long side, I should say. And it's just because of the capabilities of this program uh, working in conjunction with uh, Thinkorswim. Okay, now let's, how many stocks are here? 141. Let's go to the next one. And I don't even remember what I changed here. I did this the other day, but the number cuts down to 68 here. Let's go in and see what I ch changed on the, th actually, wow. I'm talking to myself here. Intraday gap down. EMA fan. Oh, I see. Yeah, well, no, the EMA fans, the other other one, too. This is the last divided by the open. I can't remember what was in the other one. I'm going to capture this one, okay. And I'm going to minimize it. I'm going to cancel it. I'm going to close it. And then I want to go back to the previous one. Anyway, it cut the number way down. Let's just look at a stock here. You, you can see the gap down worked. Gap down and then reversal. 
Now I want to go back to 7 from 7a and I just want to uh, see what what my difference is in the uh, filter. I thought I changed something. I had to because the numbers are so different. Okay, this is high to low. Let's let's do a uh, screen grab on this one. Okay, intraday change high divided by the low. Okay, here's the difference. Uh, the prior one is last divided by the open, and this one is the high divided by the low. So we have two options on that PK. So play with them. I'm going to leave them both in there because they both work. And uh, maybe you can find some big winners. And don't forget the commission. I knew I made a change, but, uh, you know, I, I just can't remember these changes without uh, taking a look here. And uh, I'm just going to finish with these last two. These are the ones I built, uh, that filter I built last week. Let's see what we get. Intraday strength under $50. Uh, there's 29 of them. I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to sort on industry. And you can see that the daily range of the Qs and the Spider, they're down near the lower part of their range. And, and this is where the strength is uh, in these groups. And we saw that earlier, didn't we? Uh, especially on the uh, precious metal and mining. So there's 27 plus the two ETFs. Let's go over 50. And it cuts it all the way down uh, to uh, 7 because of the ETFs. Now, uh, remember, and this was a little bit confusing, I will admit, uh, uh, the intraday range. Well, what's, oh, I see. That's a ETF. That's what threw me off. The, uh, the range has to be above 66 on the intraday range uh, for these to, to show up. And uh, this is a very, very small number. Clorox has been in there all day. I don't know about the rest of them, but I know Clorox. Let's, let's take a look at Clorox. Expensive stock. Been moving up nicely. Defensive stock. Okay, you want to look at anything else? That's 33 minutes. Uh, the market's going to close here. Let me do a quick update. Anybody have any questions on those? Are you all updated on everything? Thanks, Paul. Uh, let's uh, uh, let's look at one more thing before we go. Wow, the NQ's down twelve point to over twelve percent now. The futures, the comp is down twelve point three five. Wow, I had a feeling that would happen. Uh, you know, people chasing. But let's look at it from the other side. What have we just seen? We've seen a bunch of stocks that are moving, and uh, they are moving uh, contrary to what the market is doing. And we would never see them if we didn't have these scans. Now, you're welcome, uh, Mike. You know, I, I may just post this on the, uh, the regular board to show uh, what goes on uh, over here. And, uh, you know, everybody should be a member of the Insider Club, shouldn't they? Yeah, I will. Uh, you know, okay. I'll, I'll probably post it over there. Anyway, Jeffrey said he's going to do a, a report. I'll do my own report. Let's go into uh, the major markets plus.
and I'm going to go to top down intraday. So this is the way the markets. Uh, let's do a raw combo. I'm sorted on the percentage price change one day. Look, the volatility index uh, was up another 36 percent today. Who who would have thought? And then the gold miners up 84 percent today. This ETF. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the range. I got on the wrong column. Up 15 percent. Let's look down here. Gasoline down 22.35 percent today. Wow. Russell. This is the IWM, well, the one that everybody looks at. Let's uh, look at the chart. Just a total disaster. I'm going to do an alternate A. Let's just go up here to about this range. Well, let's go to the high for the heck of it. To the current. Down 40%. Uh, Down 39.8% over 39 days. So to get back where it was, we would just reverse this. Take it up here. And uh, it's going to, you would have to get about a 66% gain to get back where it was. That's why you cannot take the big hits. If you take the big hits, you're screwed. So that's the way the market looks. Let's just drop down to the major market ETFs. And I'm just going to go to the ETF module. Intraday. This was just updated. Look at this. The VIX short term. Percentage price change. One day $255. 76.28%. Using TOS data. Who would have imagined this ever. I'm going to do the alternate A thing to bring this up again. I'm going to take it from the effort to rise to the current price. And I'll make it full screen so we can see this. Up 533.2%. No, I'm sorry. 903.2% over 15 periods. And like I said before, Nobody, nobody's holding this. Well, I shouldn't say nobody, but uh, it would certainly take uh, a, a lot of nerve to hold it. And, you know, the, you think this is leveraged. I believe that you can even play options on this thing, if you can imagine that. Then what kind of uh, ever, uh, leverage would you get? I would have to take a look. I don't want to say that for sure. So th this is the way... Now, you can see low interest rates didn't help the home construction today, did it? Didn't help the financials. Here's the range. I'm going to sort on that. Uh, the QQQ closed uh, at the bottom of its range. Home construction nearly did two utilities. No safety there, which is kind of surprising, I believe. Uh, anyway, that gives you a feel for, you know, what we can do in HGSI uh, with uh, the combination of uh, Thinkorswim and uh, HGSI. I'll probably do more of this tomorrow. We'll see what the market's like. Uh, I'd, I'd like to do, you know, some, some more traditional uh, scans or build upon uh, my favorite scans, but in this market... Uh, you know, how do you do that? But I'll figure something out, or we may just uh, ad lib it again, if that's all right with everybody. Yeah, Any, anything else? Uh, should we call it quits? Okay, well, you go see how much money you made or lost today, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks. I'm uh, I'm staying home uh, for the most part. I have to go up to the uh, med center in Omaha.
uh, Wednesday, but it's a, just a typical uh, uh, routine checkup. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye.